Hi, I'm Christy Clarkson, Marketing Specialist at Power Factors. Today I'm talking with Steve Voss, our Vice President of Advanced Analytics. We'll be talking about artificial intelligence and how we can leverage it to accelerate the clean energy transition. Steve joined Power Factors in 2016 and has over 20 years of experience in renewables. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Christy. Thanks for having me. Let's start by defining some terms. What exactly is AI? Um, AI is a is a very broad term, and I get I get frustrated sometimes, honestly, because I think so many people use it to uh, mean so many different things in different contexts. Um, but I, there's there's a number of definitions that I hear over and over again. You know, there's obviously the uh, very forward looking, you know, science fiction type where it's it's kind of artificial general intelligence where uh, machines can match uh, humans in terms of reasoning and decision making and things like that. We're definitely not there. Uh, and nobody knows when we'll get there. People have been saying for 75 years that it's 20 years out. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. Another definition of AI, which is is very commonly used, is kind of as a, a toolbox. So there's there's a lot of things in the in the toolkit that can fall under uh, the header of of AI. Um, some people really emphasize the machine learning part. So what what is AI? It's it's a machine that's that's learning. Uh, one of the definitions that I really like is very broad and very simple, which is basically just uh, AI is the combination of data analysis and automation to uh, perform a, a given task or provide a, a given piece of information. And that's one that I that I come back to a lot. It, again, it is very different than the toolkit definition um, and it can extend to a lot of things, but it's, it's a very functional uh, definition in my opinion. Thanks, Steve. You mentioned generative AI. How is that different from other types of AI? So specifically with generative AI, uh, it's the, the the focus and the intention is to be able to generate new content. So either new data or new images or uh, new text. Uh, and a, a lot of that is about inference. So if you give it a very sparse data set, it's able to use context to fill in or extrapolate on that. Um, one, one of my favorite books is the the Count of Monte Cristo and there's a scene there where uh, one of the main characters has a burned piece of paper where half the text has been uh, lost and uh, he uses the context of who wrote it and when it was written and why it was written to take the half of the page and extrapolate out and infer the rest of the information on the page. So that's that's kind of this idea of inference is you can take a limited prompt or a partial data set and say what what is the most probable uh, extension of this or completion of this and so a lot of the the large language models and things like that are is, are basically doing that so you're taking a, a limited prompt and you're expanding on it or you're taking a, a large prompt with large text and uh, summarizing it in the in the most logical way so a lot of Generative AI is is about that creation of new content. One of the really important things with generative AI, though, too, is the uh, advent of these uh, foundational models. And one of the really important things there is rather than being kind of single purpose built models, they're so large, they're so complicated, they've been trained on so much data that you can repurpose them and use them for lots of different applications. And so one of the important things with generative AI is the uh, learning how to utilize those models, how to do the prompt engineering, how to do uh, supplement it, fine tune it with additional information that's suited to your use case. And so a, a lot of what's going on now with, with generative AI is all around how to utilize those uh, really powerful foundational models that uh, now exist. 
And what about advanced analytics? How does that factor in? So advanced analytics is um, the the name of our analytics team, obviously, but it's a, again uh, kind of a, a general term uh, using the tools in the toolbox and uh, applying them to specific tasks and questions. And so, you know, a, a big a big part of advanced analytics, I would say, is is knowing the right questions to ask and the and prioritizing uh, which which things to focus on and which information to uh, tease out and then how do you do it? So it's kind of a two part equation. What what's the what's the problem you're trying to solve and then how do you solve it? Can you talk us through the Gartner Analytics Ascendancy Model and why it's such an important part of understanding AI and the best way to implement it in the real world? Sure. The the Gartner Analytics Ascendancy Model is a is a really powerful framework for thinking about different kinds of information. Uh, and you know, it's it's an ascendancy model because it, it goes from uh, easier to generate to harder to generate, and it goes from lower value to higher value. And and basically, a lot of what this means is how much of the process are you automating? So if you take a if you take a simple example, and you say you know a, a descriptive analysis would be you are you're identifying that this uh, this generator is underperforming. Then you go to the diagnostic level and you say, this is why this generator is uh, underperforming. And so that's richer content. It it requires sometimes more context, more information. Um, but then there's the the next level, which is prediction. And uh, you know this this that can go in a lot of different directions. One of the ones with with that underperformance uh, example would be understanding the context of how often a, a technician is visiting this site. You know, so if there's a person who's there every day versus the person goes to this site once every two weeks versus this is a site that unless something really goes wrong, nobody's there uh, except for, you know, semi-annual maintenance. And so knowing that context and saying, is this worth uh, dispatching somebody for, or is this worth attaching for the probabil probabilistic arrival of somebody in the next two weeks, um, or even awareness of how far away we are from a, a scheduled maintenance. So those are kind of the the predictions around when when is somebody likely to come? What's the cost of of the repair and, and dispatching somebody to be? What's the uh, increase in performance that will happen from taking corrective uh, maintenance. And then the, the prescriptive part is going to the point of saying, all right, I understand all those things. And therefore, this is this is the recommendation that we we would make. Wait, wait until somebody until the next uh, scheduled service or the next impromptu service um, or dispatch somebody right away to take care of this issue. So, you know, that the, those are kind of the, the recommendations. In terms of tying that back to uh, the idea of AI, and in particular the the question of what what are we automating? How far along that process are we going in terms of our automation? So the the analytics ascendancy model can really help you understand both the the questions that you're trying to solve, therefore how to solve it, how to structure it, and how to present it to the user. Thanks so much, Steve. Look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll talk more about what AI means for renewables. Thank you.